Hey everybody, thanks for joining White Dog Outdoors and another video in our fly tying series. Today we're gonna to be tying another really simple yet effective Euronymph and it is the Rainbow Warrior. The Rainbow Warrior is really flashy, it's really bright, and so I tend to throw it in certain situations. Um, for me in particular, I throw it in pocket water situations where those trout have to see something quickly and react quickly. I find things like hot spots and colored legs and Rainbow Warriors work really well in those pocket water situations. Um, maybe if you have higher water, off color water, it's a good fly to use. Um, and then also, I find it works really well in stocked trout. So I think there's a lot of situations that this is a really effective fly. Um, those are just kind of the situations where I kind of tend to make it my go-to. So uh, anyway, we're going to get to tying this fly, but you guys know that with every fly tying video we do, we give away a half dozen flies, and now we're giving away a white dog koozie along with those flies. So in order to take place in the giveaway, just be a subscriber on the channel, give this video a thumbs up, and leave us a comment down below letting us know what kind of things you guys want to see. Um, at the end of this video, we'll be, doing the, we'll be announcing the drawing for the last fly tying video, the pink squirmy worm. So I got six squirmy worms ready to go to our winner of that, and we'll be announcing that at the end of the video. All right, so let's get to tying the Rainbow Warrior. We'll get a hook in here. So I've got a hook that's preloaded with a bead. We're gonna go through the details here in a sec. Um, this is, so we're using a, a jig style hook. This is a size 14 jig style hook. Uh, I do a lot of these savers. Um, so, you know, any jig style hook, I, I do like the jig style hooks a lot better than, than standard hooks. I think they make a big difference. Um, but uh, this is a size 14 jig style hook, and we've got it loaded with a tungsten bead. Again, this is a 1 8 inch tungsten bead. This is kind of my standard Euronymph. Um, if you wanted to go a little bit heavier and make it more like a bomb, you could do a 5 30 second tungsten bead, but these are rainbow beads. You'll find a lot of people tie these with more of a silver bead, but you know, if it's a rainbow warrior, shouldn't we tie it with a rainbow bead? I just kind of like the way it looks anyway. So if we're gonna call it rainbow, let's use rainbow. Um, so again, this is a 1 8 inch. You could go 5 30 seconds if you wanted to go a little bit bigger. Um, and you know, I like to tie mine heavy. Um, I like to have that good feel of, of, the, uh, of the fly. So we are gonna add a little lead. Because this body is a little more, um, a little slimmer and a little more tapered and it doesn't have dubbing that's gonna be able to hide it. I'm gonna use a thinner gauge lead than I typically do. So this is a, a 0.015 lead wire. Um, this is what I'm gonna use for this guy. And I'm gonna show you how I, how I kind of do this. We're gonna, we're, that bead won't be all the way down there when we're done, but I'm gonna show you. Um, I'm gonna get my lead out here, where are you? Okay, so we're gonna start down at the bottom and we're gonna wrap our way up, okay? And again, this is pretty thin, this is pretty thin lead. So um, we're gonna cover a pretty good distance with it. And watch, when I get up toward the bead, that's when something's gonna change. So we get up toward the bead. Now I'm gonna kind of double back. I'm gonna make it a little bit thicker. We're gonna give another set of wraps around here. And right about there, I'm gonna break it off. Okay, I'm gonna break off the tail end as well. I'm gonna try to jam these up. And now I'm gonna jam that lead up into the actual bead. And that's gonna keep the bead up and it's gonna keep the lead in place. Now this is a little bit thinner lead, so I gotta be a little bit more careful when I, I don't want it to unwind on me here. So I'm just gonna make sure I tuck that last little piece up in there. Kind of pinch it in with my thumb a little bit. Let's get you secured in there too, buddy. Okay, that should be pretty good. Okay, now for the thread, we are gonna use a red thread because we're, we're gonna be using a hotspot on this guy. And granted, it's got the nice pretty colored bead, which I'll give you guys a little more of the red instead of the blue while we're tying this. Or maybe we'll give it a little more green or yellow. Um, all right, so we're gonna use a red thread. And this is just a, it's, a, it's an ultra thread. This is a 70. Um, I like this thread, it's just, it's really shiny. Um, and so if you're gonna do a hotspot, use shiny thread, right? Um, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start at the base of that lead, and we're really just kinda of gonna build up a little bit of a base there. And we're gonna just kinda of secure that lead in by doing that. That way it doesn't slip back us at all. And we're kinda of building a more even taper as we do that. We're gonna lightly cover up this lead, and then we're gonna to try to build a nice even taper as we do it. I'll go all the way up, that's fine. But, oops, caught the back end there. I'm gonna to try to just 
make that slightly even taper. I got that pretty even there. All right, we're gonna cover that up. And what you wanna do is you definitely wanna cover the entire length of the lead. This is your, that the next material we're gonna put on is kinda see-through. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna work here to build, got a little piece of lead there I wanna pinch. We're gonna build a nice even red colored, um, nice tapered fly here. So it's basically, you're building like, just kind of like a thread body that's gonna be a nice even taper. All right, we're gonna bring that all the way back down to the bottom now that we're kind of built in here. Okay, we're gonna get rid of our tag and Okay, we're gonna tie in our tailing material. Um, you can use Coq de Leon if you want. Um, I, just, I just use a uh, pheasant tail. I find it's pretty easy. Um, I grab somewhere around three or four fibers for the tailing material. So I'm gonna grab these out. Just gonna snip them out here. We're gonna try to align those tips. We're gonna basically measure how we want it to stick off the back. And you can see, I usually go, I don't know, not too, too far off the back. A lot of people like bigger tails. I like mine kind of medium. So just kind of hold them in place where we think we want them to go with our right hand. And that looks pretty good. And I'm gonna hold it with my left now and pinch it. So I'm gonna go up into my finger and like pinch it down. I'm gonna do it again. And now those are gonna be pretty well secured. I'm gonna go a little bit further down to kind of secure those in. And I got my couple of tail fibers, and that's really all I want. Okay, we're gonna pull those guys out of there. All right, so our next material is gonna be, it's kind of like a translucent material. Um, I already cut a piece of this, but it's so hard to see sometimes. Um, it's got a lot of kind of, it's it's pretty see-through, but it's it's got that, it's got a color, it's got a real good flash to it. Um, and so it's gonna give this fly a lot of flash, and it's. And it's see-through enough that when you put it over the red thread, a lot of that red color is gonna come through. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna tie that in here. I'm just gonna work to tie it into the body. Tie it back down to where we wanna bring it up. Okay, I'm gonna cover this back up. We're gonna go almost all the way up to the front of the fly. Okay, so we're just gonna basically take this and we're gonna start wrapping it. And you essentially wanna try to just overlap these pieces just a little bit and you get that nice shiny kind of color. I'm just gonna wrap that all the way up to about here. Take our thread and we are gonna lock that guy in. Okay. And we're snipping that guy out of there. All right, so we've got most of our fly built already. Um, now we're gonna take just a little bit of dubbing and the dubbing that we're gonna use is a sow scud dubbing in rainbow color. Um, this one is made, it's a wopsy, I guess. Um, so this is the, the dubbing I typically use for this. Um, use a similar dubbing. It's got kind of, kind of rainbow colors in it, kind of creamy colors in it. Not gonna take a lot. I'm just gonna take a little bit of dubbing in my hand. And, you know, we say with dubbing, a, a little goes a long way. So we're just gonna, we're gonna, do a little bit in here. We're gonna spin it right on the thread. Um, if you wanna use dubbing wax, go ahead and use dubbing wax. I don't tend to do that. And what we wanna do is we just wanna give it just a little tiny bit of a thorax here. All right, we're gonna spin that on. I might have a little much. We're just gonna give it a little bit of color and a little bit of floof to it. It's actually pretty good. It's pretty good for my angle. I don't know what it's from your angle. Now, we got this red thread and we're basically just gonna build a little tiny hot spot. And that's really all I want to do. I did a couple of wraps and that's pretty well good. Um, I'm going to do a whip finish because if we do this whip finish, we're going to add a few more wraps to that collar. And voila, this fly is done. So you can crank these flies out pretty quickly, um, which is great. I like flies that I can tie quickly. I got a few hairs sticking out here, but that's, that's all good. Um, you know, that's it, man. That's, that's the Rainbow Warrior. Um, trying to see from your angle if it's any better. I'll spin it around and kind of see what it looks like from all the way around here. All right, I just gave this guy a little bit of a haircut. Um, but, uh, you know, this is our Rainbow Warrior. Um, very simple, very effective. I would definitely say go ahead and tie a bunch of these and uh, 
fill a row at least in your box, maybe tie a few with the bigger bead like the 532 seconds, and um, you know, then you'll have a few for the really heavy fast water and uh, the good pocket water stuff. But uh, anyway, this is the Rainbow Warrior. I like it. Hopefully you guys do too. Um, let's go ahead and get to the drawing for our previous fly tying video, the Pink Squirmy Worm. All right, so let's do the drawing for the Pink Squirmies. We had 157 participants, so thank you everybody for commenting on the video. Um, lots of different comments here. You guys always provide great stuff and I definitely read all of the comments that uh, you guys leave. So let's go ahead and get this started and see who our winner is. And the winner of the Pink Squirmies is Chris Crumley. When your own thing is a squirmy, always the drop flare could be a point fly. I definitely answered you. It can be either. Um, but uh, def uh, congratulations on winning the six squirmies. I guess you're going to get to find out which works best for you. Um, I'll reach out to you through the YouTube channel and I'll get the, the flies and the koozie on its way to you. So congratulations. All right, well, thanks for joining us and congratulations to the winner of the six squirmies. I'll have these out to you soon along with a white dog koozie. Appreciate you guys following along and having fun as we tie some flies. And uh, hopefully you guys are learning and you can see the kinds of things that are gonna go in, in your fly box. Um, I do have a, a, a video plan for our advanced urine nymphing series about fly selection. Um, it's gonna be a ton of information on how I select flies and the different flies that I use and everything like that. So that will be coming soon. Our next fly tying video uh, will be coming soon as well. So thanks for joining us. Hope you guys are enjoying everything. Definitely subscribe if you like what we're doing and we will see you soon.